of Arthur Darville and the kind of the element he brings to the show and how it might threaten kind of the Ray character because, of course, Arthur's character is a little bit more suave and debonair and, yeah. you know, charming. So. Yeah, uh, whether Ray is threatened by him. Yeah. You know, I don't think Ray is, like, traditionally ambitious and, like, I, I mean, I, I think he would want to be a leader just because he's sort of that, like, go-getter, but I don't think he has any sort of, like, Game of Thrones, like, <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of guy, he's a guileless person, like, he's sort of, he, he plays his cards, like, he does not hold them close, um, and, you know, I think when our team is assembled in this pilot, I, I think Ray is sort of like the cheerleader, you know, I mean, obviously Stein wants to travel in time because he's, you know, physicist, you know, nuclear physicist with some, like, you know, theoretically it's, but I think Ray's the sort of guy who's just like, you know, he's kind of like a Labrador retriever. It's just like, if you throw a ball, he's going to, like, run after it. Uh, and, you know, other members of our team are rightfully very um, wary, and they sort of recognize Rip's uh, offer to just, like, take a little trip in, uh, back in the past and kill Vandal Savage and save the world. Like, uh, it sounds simple, and not going to be simple, but, you know, Ray's the sort of guy who'll take people at uh, face value because that's how he sort of goes through the world, choosing to believe that it's like a bright, happy place. <laughs> In terms of uh, tone and overall story, yeah. how, is this, how is Legends going to compare to Arrow I mean, Arrow is super dark, sort of vigilante, you know, grim, you know, crusader of justice, and, and, and Flash, you know, has, has a sort of lightness and sort of family quality that ours will definitely be a little closer to that, but I think the fact that it, it, ours is a little bit more adult and it's a little bit more like, like bad cap, it's more of like a caper because um, it's sort of like the Ocean's Eleven uh, where you have this team of misfits or Dirty Dozen and they've been sent on essentially a suicide mission. So it is, it will have a lot, <laughs> you know, interpersonal tension and and uh, it'll have a lot more, it, but it's like a fun, it's like, it, it, it is almost like a family dynamic between people who can't get along, but they're forced to get along because they're stuck on this stupid time traveling spaceship and having to save the world, but if it weren't for that, you know, they would absolutely kill each other and, you know, at a certain point, you know, we will have darkness emerge and, and, and characters will betray one another and be tempted by the dark side and others might not make it along for the full trip and others might be lost in weird time periods. But I think like when they're all hanging out, like you can't ha help but have people who are that different have like fundamental disagreements about the stupidest of things and like it's it's just a very sort of quippy, wisecracky show that to me is like hilarious because that's like what I want to write. I don't want to write people who like say like let's go save the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all save the world. Like to me it's just like hold on, hold on, hold on. Like well, let, let's talk about the saving the world. Like I've got, you know, I've got a side agenda. While we're saving the world, you know, I'd like to try to do something. I'm, I want to, you know, change my, my eighth grade like math score so that I can like, you know, do better or whatever. Like I, I like that they're selfish and, and petty and, and human. You know, to me those are those are the kind of heroes that I enjoy writing. In some of the interviews that we've had, we've heard that some of the setup for the series yeah. is going to be on Arrow and yeah. Flash. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how that's going to work? Well, there's just so many characters, and you know, ideally the the pilot, um, you know, of this show, you should be able to watch it. And if you don't know the people, you know, it'll be like a sort of getting the band together kind of episode. But in order to sort of deepen that, um, we wanted to give you know sort of half and half Flash and Arrow introductions. Um, so that it, you know, I assume you guys probably watched the other two shows, so that you do have this, like, you know, to me as a kid, like, watching crossovers, like, I was pretty sure television was real, you know, <laughs> I was pretty sure, like, Scooby-Doo was real, but then, like, when the Globetrotters appeared, like, on Scooby-Doo, I was like, well, that's proof it's real, because I saw the Globetrotters, <laughs> like, like, and those are real people, and if they're on scooby 
to do. And so, like, to me, doing a crossover show, like, has that kind of cool resonance where you're like, well, these are clearly real people because we saw them introduced and we made the present so screwed up and uninhabitable for them that they literally had to get on a spaceship and go to another time just so they wouldn't be killed, <laughs> like, either by their friends or enemies. Is Jay Jackson a code name for any other character, and how long will we have to wait for Booster Gold? Oh, boy. Um, I wish I could, like, tease a booster thing, but you might have to wait for a good long while, at least on, on, on our show, and Jay is not, it's not a code. It's not a code. Um, but I feel like Booster is uh, perhaps being groomed for bigger things. Not that there's anything bigger than this show, but, you know, someday there might, in the future. <laughs> Where he was physically, where he was physically, um, I mean, he was uh, close enough to uh, become physically altered by the effects. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you just maybe arc out a little bit uh -huh. what's going to happen? Because your show is like a mid-season replacement. What, where is the trajectory for that first little bit of the season you're going to have? The first little bit or just the, the first 16? The first 16. Because, I mean, it's an anthology show. I mean, it's not, this is not designed to go forever. I mean, this season is meant to be standalone. I mean, not as it, anthological as, like, True Detective, but not everybody will be continuing on this journey. And the sort of central premise of time travel and Vandal Savage is totally up for grabs. This is meant to be a season that is tightly serialized, that like when it's over, you can't go home again. It's not it's not going to begin season two with us all hopping back on the same ship and like, let's get Vandal, but let's get him for real this time. Um, this is not like traditional uh, episodic television in that way. So yeah. what happens during the time travel? Will that affect then Arrow and Flash in certain ways, perhaps? Um, yeah, and you know, I mean, on top of that, there's also the ability to visit the sort of Arrow and Flash worlds prior to the sort of beginnings of those shows. Like, if you want to go see Barry as crime tech, or if you want to see Oliver pre- shipwreck playboy you know we are able to meet people before either of those shows started and then we're also yeah we're able to go into the futures of the show and see you know um you know how how we're moving our whatever seven eight characters from the timeline I mean, that's not what has the effect on the future. It's basically in trying to take out Vandal, the things we screw up, like how will make how will that like make the world like an impossible place for us to return in 2016? You know, I think that's the real fun is the sort of back to the future. You know, what happens if you, as a placeholder, your parents don't meet each other? What happens if uh, you know? Those things where you can upset in your own future, like as you're trying to save the world, like what what you can do to your own life. 